Hi, are you trying to set up a behavior chart for your child? This is part two of a three-part series. The first part was on how to set up the goals for a behavior chart. This one is on how to set up the rewards on a behavior chart. And the third one is on how to follow through and be consistent in the use of a behavior chart. So when you're setting up the rewards for a improving your child's behavior, you want to set it up in a way that the child will be really motivated to make behavior change because that's the whole point. You know, you're trying to set up a plan so that your child wants to work on replacing old negative problem behaviors with these new behaviors that you're trying to encourage them to develop. So, and we know that uh, setting up a positive reinforcement plan is one of the most effective ways of creating behavior change. Uh, so there's been lots of evidence that this kind of strategy works. And so that first thing that you really need to keep in mind is that the reward needs to matter to your child. So the reason I mention that, because it seems like it should be obvious, but I like to say that because sometimes we want to think of rewards that we think the child should like, rather than things that really matter to them. So we have to sometimes do some experimenting with finding out what would really matter to that child to earn. And it, we're talking about, you know, rewards can be all kinds of things. They can be things that cost uh, money, you could have a little prize box, they might be a privilege that the child is earning, it might be some time with you, some ch a chance to do a special activity, uh, it could be uh, tokens that the child is earning that they can then cash in for something else. Uh, rather than something they just select right at that moment when they've earned a reward. So there's all kinds of ways that rewards can work. And you need to find something that you know your child cares about and will work for in order to get. Uh, so that also ties into the fact that it needs to be something the child doesn't have another way of getting. So that means if you, for instance, give your child unlimited computer time, you don't want to use computer time as a reward because they already get unlimited time. Or if you already get them a lot of um, special treats, uh, say, let's say a candy bar, uh, you don't want to use a candy bar as a reinforcement that they could earn because they already have plenty of candy. So you want to keep that in mind, that it needs to be something that the child doesn't normally have access to, that it's a special treat of some kind. Another thing is that a reward needs to fit your own values. So for instance, if you decide that, uh, or maybe a better way to put that is if your child decides they want a particular kind of reward, I'll use the candy example again. And candy is something you just don't feel good about giving. You know, you personally don't like your child to have sweets, and uh, you're concerned about you know, the health effects of using sweets, then you're not gonna want your child to earn the reward, basically. You're not gonna be excited and trying to give them that reward. So even if something works for your child, if it doesn't work for you, because it doesn't work within your own value system, you're not gonna be really trying to promote them to get it. So you wanna find something that will matter to your child and that really feels good to you to give them. Like, boy, I would love giving my child this if they stopped arguing with me so much. You know, I'd be more than happy to give them that um, trip to the park or I would be more than happy to let them earn a sleepover. Or I'd be more than happy to give them this prize from a prize box. Uh, and then the last thing is when you're thinking about rewards is that it needs to be something you can afford based on either time or money which is usually what rewards involve in some way. So it needs to fit within uh, your budget of those things. So if your child wants uh, to earn a new video game, you need to look at your budget and think if they actually earn it, and if they earn it maybe quickly based on really having some good behavior over a period of time, is that something that you can afford to give them? And would you feel good about giving that to them? And also is it, if you've got other children, you need to consider the fairness issue in terms of do your other children have some way of earning a similar reward? Uh, if it's something that costs you time, then you need to decide if that's truly something you're gonna be able to do. Because I've seen lots of kids complain about how they've earned a reward, maybe some time with their mom or dad, or to do something, and they haven't gotten it quickly. And we're gonna talk about that more in the next video. But you need to be able to evaluate you know, your own time allowances to see is that going to work. 
And the same is true if a child, say, is wanting to earn gaming time or something as a reward. You need to think, is there a way that's going to fit into our weekly time plan for our family life? Am I going to be able to grant that reward? So if it's a reward that they've earned and you've, you're okay with giving it to them also, but there's no way to fit it into the time that happens, you know, in terms of how the family spends its time over the week, then it's not going to motivate behavior change because they're never going to get to cash in their reward, so to speak. So my name is Barbara Lester. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I've worked with hundreds of children and adolescents. And if you're interested in more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is part two of a three-part series on how to set up a behavior chart. And the first one is on setting up goals. This one is about rewards. And the third one is going to be on following through on the reward plan. So thanks for stopping by.